soon as Andy. Everyone can ask a question. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 32 minutes. I'd like to welcome everyone to a regular scheduled Egg Harbor City Council meeting, October 17th, 2024. Call to order. This meeting has been properly advertised and posted in accordance with Public Law 75, Chapter 231. May I have a roll call, please? Mayor Jim Petty will not be here tonight. She has a family obligation. Uh, at Tanisi? Here. Clark? Here. Dash? Here. Ms. Galloway will not be here. Ms. Heiss? Here. Ms. Hesse will not be here either. Mr. Timbers? Here. Mr. Wright? Here. And Mr. Richard? Here. <clears throat> I have a motion to approve the minutes from September 19th. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? All right. At this time, open up to the public. Any comments regarding agenda items only, excluding items listed for public hearings? All in once. Question regarding the agenda? Yeah. Sure. Step on up, state your name. My name is Bill Stumpig. Is this on? Yeah. Yes. Oh. What was your first name? Bill. Bill. Bill Stumpig. I'm from Tuckahoe, New Jersey, and I'm a member of the uh, Surfrider Foundation. I'm the uh, co chair, and we're here in support of the um, Safe Construction Work Sites Ordinance. Uh, we've gotten ordinances passed in five other municipalities around the state so far. And uh, we think it's important because it's uh, not only a bad for the health of the people creating the dust, but it's also bad for the environment. And um, I handed out a few things we have up there. I'm not the person that is the prime mover for this. It's Steve Giusecki who wanted to be here today, but um, he's in some meeting in Margate, but he's he's watching now. Anyway, we think it's really important and we're really supporting this. And I know you're going to introduce the ordinance and then it gets voted on in a few weeks or something. We'll have a public meeting then regarding it. And then hopefully by December meeting, it should go into effect for Great. January 1st. Okay. Yeah. So I, I hope you pass it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time. Anybody else from public? Once, twice. All right. Hello. Can I say something? Absolutely. Hi, I, I am Steve Jacecki from uh, Margate, and I really firmly believe in this ordinance. To give you some background on it, um, our tech, <clears throat> our technology seems to outpace what we, um, with our new, our te technology is outpacing our laws and procedures that really protect us from harmful products that are being put out there. Um, I've witnessed a lot of this plastic uh, contaminants that's from the construction going on. And if you know that we have a lot of construction going on and they are just blowing it around all over the place and it's not really doing the neighbors and other people uh, justice. So I tried to contact some of the companies for guidelines. And what I got was that cleanup and proper disposal is the responsibility of the contractor. And I researched some things on OSHA and they are mostly concerned with the safety of the workers, but not the environment. But when we see these kind of products, and it's not just plastic, it's it's about uh, fiberglass and concrete dust and stuff that is going on to neighboring properties and going could be going into their gardens, which they may be eating from. So we really believe that this is very important that municipalities start to pass ordinance that are really going to protect the people and the public. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Not at this time. Uh, when we get to it, it's number 18 on the agenda. So at that time, if there's any questions, uh, you may be addressed with them. Uh, okay, well, thank you. Yep. Anybody else from the public? All right. Uh, anybody have a mayor's report? Nope. Awesome. All right. Moving on to council committee chair reports. I'll start with finance and redevelopment. So we've had several meetings over the past month regarding uh, a couple of situations, one being our superintendent of public works, which is on the agenda. Um, where is it? Resolution 13, number 13, 13, 
Uh, when we get to that, we'll speak in more detail if there's any questions for that. Also, we are in cur currently in contract negotiations with the PBA, and that should be forwarded to them if it hasn't already been our council counter proposal from the city regarding what they were asking for. Uh, with that, code enforcement, code enforcement still moving forward. Um, from what I understand, they're out there on the streets. They're doing their job. Um, as I said before, they got the tools and necessities they need to continue to do and uh, enhance their job performance. Uh, so with that, I'll move into safety. Councilman Dash. Safety, nothing to report for safety. <clears throat> Councilwoman Heist, Public Works. Yeah, Public Works has been busy um, out at the lake, picnic tables, um, winterizing all the piping in the the concession stand, making sure everything is where it needs to be in the um, bathrooms on the far side. They're taking care of that, so that's ready for when the weather gets cold. Um, I know they're start. They, if they haven't started, they are starting the leaf pickup around town. So check the website and see what day your block is going to be for leaf pickup. Um, and Mr. Adams and Jake, one of our um, workers, were was at a tree. Some kind of. I'm going to say tree rally. I don't know what it was. Training. Tree, tree training over in Atlantic City today. So they spent their day over there learning about the trees and all the stuff that is being going to go into place. So, and that's all I have. Thank you. Councilwoman Anthony, see property parks playgrounds? Uh, for property parks and playgrounds, we had uh, the end of season lake meeting last Tuesday. Uh, Ingrid and myself uh, um, were a part of it, along with the community and the event from the campgrounds. Uh, a couple things were discussed that I want to bring up tonight. Uh, they wanted us to come up with an agreement for the pavilion rentals with the badges. Last season, they never raised their rates. So what occurred was people were renting the pavilion with the badges that are included and then just going over to swim, not even using the pavilion. So they want to come up with a fair price. Uh, Ingrid is going to bring that up at the next ordinance meeting when we discuss the badge prices again. And then we're going to get those prices back to Dave so that he can advertise those and raise them accordingly for next year. Um, which seems fair. Uh, we received our third payment from the campgrounds uh, that was put in uh, this week. And then Dave and Jeannie advised that they believe that they have a contract through 2026, which contradicts what Angela had advised me. So I talked to Angela, she's going to triple check. We're going to make sure we're all on the same page and get that information back to them. Um, they also expressed uh, which is opposite of what they said at the beginning of the season, that they want to potentially continue their contract at the end of the current contract. I did request that they advise us once they make up their mind because they do need to have adequate knowledge so that we can plan for the future for the campground. And that's all I have. Casey, do you have a total of what the third payment was? Um, it's in my email from Judy. And do we have a, a lake report financing? Lake report or no? I was not given the final okay. lake report. No worries. Um, the... Final payment was made in two checks. <coughs> one was for $100 and the other one was for $2,334 and some kind of sense over there. <laughs> and then I have nothing for school board to name. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Wright, you too? Nope. Councilwoman Clark, uh, license ordinance? Uh, nothing to report. Sure. Councilman Timbers, land use, and Aaron Huffin? Uh, nothing for Aaron Huffin. However, uh, the land use board did meet on October uh, 17th, and uh, they discussed, how about 17? 15. And uh, they discussed the variance uh, for Shore Real Estate 1. That's at 1225 Whitehorse Pike. The uh, new canals liquor. They're going to put up a sign similar to what you see over at the Dollar General, just a sign you can see it on the front of Route 30. Uh, it was approved by the board. Anything else? No. Well, um, I may discuss it. In a minute. Yeah. So, so it was brought to my attention. I don't know if it was that meeting or a different meeting uh, regarding a third retail license for cannabis. Was there a comment made regarding that? So uh, Ryan will probably discuss it. Uh, when we when we did the ordinance originally, it was for two um, retail operations. However, there was the possibility of one being done under, um, I think it was redevelopment law. And um, if, if that is to move forward, that would 
need to be approved uh, by council. Okay. And, yeah, my understanding is that the redeveloper for the parcel will be approaching council to request a third retail license for his development plan. Okay. That's all right. I'm just wondering where that comment came from because I don't think anybody sitting on this dais up here knew of that. So I found out. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that we've had many people come in here wanting a license and we've turned them away. And now we have somebody coming wanting a license and we're going to accept it. That doesn't seem like it's. Well, we're not going to accept it. No, well, well, it well, has to go in front. Right. So. It has to go in front of us. Yeah. But still, that's, you know, yeah. we have to be fair across the board. Yeah. So thank you, sir. Any, nothing else. Right? You're good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, Meg, you have, I mean, Jackie, you have anything? <laughs> I got it, Jack. <laughs> All right, that uh, concludes the committee chair reports. Uh, moving on to Chief of Police. How you doing? Been a while, huh? A month? Yes. That's what it does. <laughs> no, I use that. Some numbers for you. From 919, we've been sure that was 1017. We've had three burglaries, two okay. assaults, two stolen vehicles, nine, mm -hmm. uh, nine of that. Uh, nine full motor vehicle accidents, three pedestrian stops, 32 traffic stops. Um, well, that's not great. I don't know why those numbers are not that. We've had much more. Uh, it says that we had five traffic uh, citations issued. We've had many more than that. Um, seven arrests, including DUIs. Eight business alarms, one residential alarms, 160 crime prevention activities, four criminal mischief uh, calls, nine domestics, 36 DMS calls, 11 firearms ID applications, 14 follow ups, 40, 487 property checks, and 14 public service calls. Um, I know that there were many more traffic stops because we did participate in the um, stress over event pulled over initiative. Um, it's a state grant uh, by the uh, traffic highway safety. Um, we participate in that. We'll be participating in games for the news another clicker ticket at the beginning of December. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sorry, I don't have a number of citations, but there were quite a few issues. Um, other things, we have been laying off on training some because right now we are going through some staffing issues that we did have two folks leave that we discussed last time. We are in the process of doing background um, uh, checks on a few different people. And unfortunately, because we are civil service, we have to wait for our civil service list I know that there are a few people who are already fully certified who are all who will be on the list so that way we can hire them. Um, otherwise, anybody on the list or any direct hires that we have to do, we have to send them through an academy. So that's at least another six months to six to nine months before we can have anybody on the list. Um, but everybody's stepping up and we're doing their part to make sure that operations in the PD are continuing the way that they should and providing the best services that we can. Um, that being said, we have curtailed some of the training some just so that we can have people on the roads. One thing that we did do, Captain Perna arranged a stop the bleed training for everybody in the department, um, talking specifically about tourniquet use, um, wound care, packaging, and that kind of thing. Um, so we are putting together, I had uh, Bill Klein, who did the uh, the training, who gave me a list of the in first individual for the school, the officers. Um, and then basic stuff that we should have in terms of first aid supplies. So um, we're, we're coming up with kits for that to put into each of the individual vehicles as the officers to have. Um, we participated in the Cedar Creek High School Fall Festival. Uh, each year, um, Chief Sambrone from the Hamilton Township Police Department and I, we go out there, uh, we get a hay ride wagon thing. I don't know how to describe it. Um, they put it up to the back of our truck, and then while there are festivities going on in the parking lot, we do a nice little seated ride through the fields and the woods down there. So that's always a big hit. We always have a very, very long line for that. Um, so we did that. Um, MS Bike Race came through, um, not as much traffic as usual because it was a rainy weekend, but they did change that route some, so we no longer have a uh, stop here in a Harbor City. Um, other than that, I don't know if Angela can talk about this or if we can talk about this. The uh, last time I was here, I talked about Harbor Fields and the Juvenile Justice Committee. Um, that next morning, just briefly, yeah, the county and uh, the county to include the Sheriff's Department, the Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office, and the um, Public Safety. Oh, yeah, yeah, Public Safety. Um, <clears throat> They filed a lawsuit against the Juvenile Justice Commission um, for, I believe, breach of contract and then just not providing the service that they're supposed to. Um, the Atlanta County Chiefs of Police Association signed a letter in support of that, uh, and there will be upcoming hearings 
um, in front of Judge Lee in the next upcoming months to address the issues that we're dealing with there. Um, again, a, a lot of it has to do with just not being able to house or the Juvenile Justice Commission not holding up their end of the bargain for the contract in terms of accepting juveniles who have been placed on warrants. Um, we had a situation yesterday where there was a juvenile who was arrested and uh, unfortunately the sheriff's department did have to keep him overnight because none of the juvenile uh, justice facilities would accept him or so they, they did not have room for him. So this is an ongoing issue and uh, that's what the lawsuit is about. So there's some more mm -hmm. Um other than that, upcoming things this Saturday, we have our family fall festival that the EDC puts on from 3 to 6 p.m. on 100 block Philadelphia Avenue. Anybody who is on 100 block, there will be parking restrictions starting early in the morning. The road will be closed down at 1 o'clock, so please find all your routes. But that's pretty much all. Uh, regarding the hiring, <clears throat> we have an established list already, or are they in a testing cycle? Um, they just did a test. Okay. Uh, we exhausted the list uh, that we had. So, um, and that was through, I think that was at all of it, not just at River City, but county and state as well. Um, so we don't have anyone on our list currently who did not either continue on with the process or decline to continue at that point in time. So um, I believe the next list is supposed to come out either in November or in the summer. Okay. So that was the next question. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any other questions for the chief? No, but can you please extend our gratitude to all your men and women who are working very hard to keep our streets safe and mm -hmm. covering those shifts that aren't theirs, but they're willing to take over. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Maybe too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Jody's not present tonight. There's nothing pending really with the CF, CFO report. Um, I did jump to Jackie by mistake. I know you have nothing, so Ryan, the floor is yours. Sure, uh, just a couple quick updates. Uh, Liverpool Avenue, we're getting fairly close. Uh, we're hoping to be done in the next two weeks. Um, I'm just waiting for an answer from the contractor as to whether we'll be paid for Halloween because that's the ideal scenario. Um, so I'm, I'm just waiting for an answer back. I'll pass that along when I get it. Um, Buffalo Avenue, the four or 500 blocks, we are pretty much done with the design. We should be getting that out to DOT in the next week or two. Um, and then we'll bid it this winter, trying to start probably in February or March, because um, they're not going to be able to pave it um, anywhere between you know November and, and February. Uh, and then the, the last thing that's really active is the ADA improvements at the lake that you got the um, DCA funding for. Um, we have the site layout pretty much done. We're hoping to get a pipeline's application in the next like couple of weeks. Um, and we'll we'll sort of you know get a, a draft plan in and, and get that reviewed by you guys too. I know that's uh, an area you guys have a lot of interest in the campground. Um, so we'll make sure we get draft plans in and make sure everybody's on the same page before we get too far. Okay. <clears throat> Regarding the electric upgrade and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, the the electric upgrades is is part, but the um, the thing we need a permit for for the pine lands is um, we got the funding for an ADA compliant path going around the, the full side of the lake. So uh, some ADA parking spaces over um, near like where you pull into the, the dirt parking lot over near the fence, ADA accessible route into uh, where the beach area is to the concession stand to the uh, bathrooms, and then an ADA route that takes you uh, over the two little bridges where the spillways are over to the other side. Right. Yes. In that, was there anything included from the campground to the beach? Yeah, so we we have a, a section that sort of extends out to the beach, and that that's the kind of stuff we need to talk through. It's like, where does it make sense to end that path? So, and what type what type of materials do you use for the path? So, because of the complications with the pine lands, we're looking at um, a pervious like, essentially, it's designed originally as like a temporary mat type material, kind of like what you see at the beach. Yeah, but we'll have to, we'll have to install it in a manner that is considered permanent in order for it to be eligible for the funding. So what they don't want is to buy a bunch of this temporary stuff and you put it down and you just pick it up and go put it in your football field or something. Yeah, so yeah. Um, we'll have to devise a way to make it a permanent installation. But we had to come up with something that wouldn't count as disturbance or impervious coverage, which was definitely a challenge, but yeah. we found something. So um, I actually have a sample of it from um, the League Municipalities meeting like a couple of years ago, but just coincidentally, we grabbed a piece of um, some of other plants and use it in other places. Um, so I can bring a sample of like the type of material we're talking about so you guys can look at it and get hands on it. Um, but that's so it's that's like what you see in the wild woods. 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch of different variations, but whatever we do is going to have to be very porous. We have the version that I have, the sample that I have is like a, almost like an extruded plastic material that's like fine fibers. Okay. Um, and it's it's um, like molded on the ends and then it's it poured, you know, you pour a cup of water and just water it. Through. Right. Um, but yeah, we need to come up with something where we weren't disturbing the soil, we weren't regrading, we weren't doing anything, we're just putting something down on top. Gotcha. So that's what we came up with. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Well, I got uh, four, more, four more questions for you. All right, we got Start with Liverpool and Chief, maybe you have insight. Is a parade route part of Liverpool that's being resurfaced? So it was. Um, a member of council reached out to me and said that it is normally part of the route. Would they be done by the 27th? And I, right. I got a no from the contractor. So the route is being um, changed from what I understand. Okay. So I actually talked to one of, I, I, maybe I need to talk, talk to the contractor directly. Each night they open the road and yes. don't have it as closed. They're like, people can drive on it. Yeah. So, you know, and moving the route the way that was recommended would require doubling on people and double amount of vehicles, which we just can't, Not really. can't do. Sure. So um, I recommend we that when we keep the route up the way it is. I said that I would be in, con in contact with the contractors to see exactly where they are with that because sure. right now it's just compacted dirt and I'm like, you know, so yeah, but yeah, it's, I don't think it's good. I got to definitely would not be paid for that house. So, so yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, best case scenario, it, it, there won't be any holes in front of the gutter line or anything like that. And it'll be just be dirt at best. Dirt don't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, if you don't mind, it'll be open. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think. Um, and we'll, we can obviously we get them to like clean it up and pay extra attention before they close out the weekend. You know, I drove on it the other day, and I mean, it was. Yeah, I drove know, it Tuesday night. And it was Weird. so. So yeah. So I mean, I'll, I'll definitely reach out to them. Mint and we to be like, listen, make sure that you know everything is kind of copacetic before mm -hmm. the end of the week, but it's going to be a Sunday. So, so yeah, so, yep. so the route should remain the same. Okay. <clears throat> uh, regarding the solar field project, where are we at with that? The solar with um, the potential to redevelop or that's like, no, uh, no, the one we started like three years ago. Oh, the one to do the RFP here? Yeah. Are we, are we definitely doing ground mount over there? I think that's what the general consensus was. Okay. okay. We'll, we will update the RFP and get it back to you guys to get authorized to go back out. Okay. And uh, New Orleans Avenue, I know you said it, but just so everybody else knows, another, what's two years now? What's we been? are anticipating having approval by December. So that, like, that's what I said last meeting was my goal to close that out before the end of the year because it, yeah, it had drove on way more than it should have. Okay. And then uh, Councilman Wright, I don't know if you spoke with Ryan regarding the expansion on the concession stand. We're going to meet Thursday. Yeah, okay. we're on calendar for next Thursday. Cool. Now I have two questions. Sure. Okay. <laughs> the bike path from the lake to the city. I've been asked numerous times. Um, where is that in the process? I told, I, my answer was it was tied up in what, the material we were using um and then there was an endangered something or another out there you know yeah so we we passed along all the endangered species studies that we had in the area to cme like a while ago um there were some discrepancies because there's multiple projects going on in the same area at the same time so there were some discrepancies with like wetlands was flagged one way by one company and a different way by a different company like Conrad's was not happy about that um there were issues with the county um, and water quality, Pinelands recently changed their rules, so their water quality requirements are incredibly difficult to meet, especially when you're near wetlands, because now you have to filter um, any runoff through two facilities, which like it's hard enough to get one, and now you got to get it drained into one and then drain it into another from there. So we have to filter the water that normally just runs off the road into the lake anyway without a bike pit, basically. Pretty much. Okay. Um, I understand that. <laughs> So, we about like, but we this is like the fifth year. Yeah, so we we just talked about it the other day. We're it's year five for the project. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've gotten pulled into a couple meetings with the county and with the pilots, like try to help, but we haven't had any involvement with the design or any of that. Yeah. CME is still moving along. Um, but yeah, the last meeting we had, the last meeting I was involved with was probably three months ago, and it was with the county, and it was when um, the city uh, said that we have the equipment and we could maintain this path if it was constructed with porous asphalt. Um, because the CME came up with that as their potential solution so that you can filter it through the porous pavement and then have a, a subsurface infiltration facility, which is a be stowed underground um, next to it. 
So the county said, well, that's great, but we don't have the equipment to clean that if you install it. And we're not going to go out and buy a vacuum truck just so we can clean that. Uh, so I talked to Keith. We got a model number. We did some research. His back truck can clean the forest pavement. So, um, you know, we, we sort of said, look, if the county is willing to accept that, we can clean it and, and it will be fine. So we passed that along to CME. Hopefully they resubmitted the commission with that approach by now, but I haven't, I haven't seen it. So at what point is the funding going to run out for this project? Well, the weird part is DOT is paying for the design since you went through the design assistance route. So as far as I know, they're going to continue to extend the construction funding because they're providing the design for Okay. Um, so I'm I'm not aware of the funding being in danger, but okay. Yeah, I had one resident ask me, "Is there any place the residents can call mm -hmm. to put pressure on them to get this moving?" And I said, "I do not know that." I mean, you could write a letter to council, and we can forward it to the finance commission. That would be the the path I would advise. Um, and we can forward it to CME so that they're aware that it's something that the city really does care about and wants to see advance. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not, unfortunately, there's not much I can do. My last question is, you know what it is? The bridge at the lake. So the bridge design is the other project that I was referencing. That is still being designed by Frank Cabrillo. And what I understand, it is budgeted for the county's 2026 fiscal year. So I believe it should get replaced, not this upcoming year, but the year after. I, I'm not aware of any permitting issues they had. I did see it on one, with one meeting with them like 18 months ago. Um, they were having some issues dealing with water quality, shocker. Um, but I think they were able to work through that in combination with the bike path project. Okay. So I think that's all sorted out. All right. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else for Ryan? He's here. He was here last month. <laughs> yeah, no, I missed a couple. Yeah. But, no, we're good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Appreciate Thank it. Uh, Angela. Okay. So the first thing is um, there's an, an addition to the agenda, the resolution to place the $850,000 grant in the budget for three. And then we have the memorandum of agreement with Keith Adams. The highlights are basically the four-year agreement and along with the salary increases, Mr. Adams will now be the supervisor of the code enforcement office. So he's taking on essentially another job. And in page four, five, and six of the agreement, you'll find all his duties and responsibilities for both jobs. Um, the ordinance, which is number 18, that I believe is a uh, necessary ordinance. It talks about controlling dust and trash and plastic contaminants. And it's applicable to all contractors who work within the city. Um, it's good for the environment. It's good for people. It's good for us. So I recommend you consider that. <clears throat> um, as far as the lawsuit, yes. The, um, the county filed a lawsuit against the juvenile justice and the state of New Jersey. So essentially they would do their jobs. We filed a position statement, which is just shy of an intervention in the lawsuit. The judge Blee is the judge on that. And judge Blee said, um, issued an order that position statements were accepted. So I filed one on behalf of the city because the Harbor Field is within the city. And I cited all the numerous violations and all the numerous events that our police officers have to face on a daily basis because the state can't do their job. And along with that, the judge set a scheduling order. Um, I suppose there'll be argument it's in order to show cause, which means it will be held on an emergent basis sometime in the future. Um, and I don't know what will happen. I know some folks are intervening. Some of the other counties are doing formal intervention in the lawsuit. I didn't see the need for that because that's kind of expensive. I'd have to file another complaint, blah, blah, blah. And so this will serve the purpose of the city in a better way. And as soon as we have anything else to report on that, we will. But otherwise, I do believe the state and juvenile justice will eventually do their job. They will be forced to do their job. Um, I think that's it. Thank Anyone you. have any questions? Uh, oh. Bowling alley. Oh, the bowling alley, well, it's an ongoing saga. It was heard, it, it was not heard in September. They had COVID at the court. 
Mm. We got pushed. <laughs> what a nice convenience. Yes, yeah, right. So it got pushed to October. They had argument on both the administrative warrant, get this, and the citations. Then the judge wanted briefs from the prosecutor and the attorney for Ben, and now it's being heard the first week in November, November 6th, I believe. What court is this being held in now? Atlantic City. <laughs> That's where it is. I spoke to the code enforcer. I spoke to Steve and I asked him to file new citations because the citations are getting stale since we've been pushed off for so long. So I asked him to review, take more photos, file new citations. I directed him to file the citations in Hamilton. And we'll see if they keep it, if they shift it. I don't know. Hmm. There's no conflict yet. The other case was resolved. That was the conflict because there was the planning board member, uh, blah, blah, blah. That was the conflict. That's why it got shifted to West Cape May, got shifted to Atlantic City, but now there's no conflict. So maybe these new violations will tread better than the old. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking yeah. of time in court, did they get back to you that now they're going to be a little more? Yeah, as a matter of fact, they, uh, they became better in many <laughs> ways. Um, for lack of a better word. So they are, they hired a person. Okay. They are having a special day just for code enforcement issues. So they're not lumped into the general. Um, they're providing quarterly updates to Jody on an expedited basis because before they weren't providing them at all. Right. So now she's getting them every three months or so. Okay. And they said, if we have any further issues, then I'm to reach out to them. But they, they were conducive. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Anyone else? <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Moving on to number 13. It's the resolution uh, previously, previously spoken upon by Angela regarding our superintendent of public works to authorize the city of Egg Harbor to enter into and amend the memorandum of agreement with Mr. Keith Adam. Uh, are there any further comments or questions regarding what has transpired over the past month with this situation? Uh, question sure. with uh, code enforcement. Yes, we were just we were um, talking about uh, possibly getting another person. Mm -hmm. Does this affect that or is it no? Okay. Nope. Not at all. Any other questions? Yeah, is this a slight or is it a, um, a salary increase? Salary increase. <laughs> and, uh, what what is that salary increase? Okay. So from right now he is at he's at this current year he's at eighty nine nine and some change. Um, <clears throat> he asked for to open it up to extend it to a four year. Initially he came at us he wanted to go right to one twenty. Uh, we negotiated where next year he's going to get two two increases to total total the amount which is don't quote me on these numbers but January first he'll be getting around fifty four hundred and then July first fifty four hundred which will bring him to 100 even. And then from there, I believe he goes to, do you have the numbers? Yes, I do. Yeah, if you could, okay. I'm sorry. So he goes to 100 by December 31st of 25. He goes to 106 five by December 31st of 26. He goes to 113 by the end of December 31st of 27 and 120 where he ends up on December 31st of 2028. <clears throat> and the reason, the, the reason to elaborate uh, just a little bit more, uh, he was offered a lucrative position mm -hmm. and salary in a private industry work environment. Um, and we came to the conclusion with the quality of work mm -hmm. that he does for this city and the leadership that he portrays being in the role he is in and the changes that he has made uh, in our current day and time, it's hard to find individuals like him with those qualities. Uh, so this is why we came to this conclusion to do this with him. So. And he's also picking up <clears throat> picking up additional responsibilities. Yes. How much is he being compensated for the additional responsibilities? <clears throat> there is no dollar amount set on that. It was encompassed in him more or less agreeing to, yes, I will take oversight of code enforcement and more or less put the systems in place and things like that to reflect what this agreement is showing. Okay. And with that, does he still receive his 
I think it's a stipend to be the superintendent of uh, public works. Does he receive that in addition mm -hmm. to the salary? No, there's no, no stipend. Mm -hmm. no. But also, as supervisor of code enforcement, as part of his duty, since we are having some trouble with people going to court, I put in as part of his duty that if if the general persons cannot go to court, he'd be mandated to go to court. And that takes a whole day to add his time, mm -hmm. as you know. <clears throat> Any other questions regarding? If not, may I have a motion? Make a motion. I second that. All right. Have a roll call, please. Okay. Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Paste? Yes. Timbers? Timbers? Yes. Right? Yes. And Richie? Yes. <clears throat> Number 14 is a rebel, uh, resolution, resolution for uh, waive rental and cleaning fee for the use of Lincoln Park for Community Outreach South Jersey Family Medical Centers. Any questions or comments regarding this? All right. If not, may I have a motion? Second. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right? Yes. And Richie? Yes. 15 is authorizing a refund of the 2024 Egg Harbor City Lake concession stand operating security and excess electricity deposit. Any questions or comments? May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right? Yes. And Richie? Yes. And number 16, before we do actual number 16, we have to do the resolution that's to add on, right? Right. All right. Um, can you review what that language is again? I'm sorry. Um, you have it there, but it's, yep. uh, off the top of my head, it's a resolution. Do you want to? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a resolution requesting approval of item of revenue and appropriation. Uh, the $850,000 um, to be placed into the budget from the leafing app management grant. Thank you. Any uh, further questions or comments regarding it? So yeah. just, just to clarify, sure. this is $850,000 grant in addition to the million dollar grant. Right. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> May I have a motion? Second. Second. Roll call, please. Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right? Yep. And Richie? Yes. And then number 16 is to award the tree inventory tree assessment contract. Any questions or comments? May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Energy. Yes. 17 is resolution for 100% disabled veteran property tax exemption. Any questions or comments? Motion, please. Motion. Second. Roll call. Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right? Yes. And Richie? Yes. And number 18 is to introduce that ordinance previously spoken upon regarding uh, chapter 178-9 construction sites and adopting a new chapter 178-9 titled safe construction work sites within the city of Egg Harbor. Any further questions or comments regarding this? I just have a quick yeah, question. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're good. Sure. Um, is this just contractors or would this be homeowners as well? Just contractors. Okay, thank you. Councilman, right? Um, yeah, I mean, the touch base on this, I do this for a living. Uh, dealing with the AZAC products, fiberglass, all that stuff on a, on a daily basis. Um, I know with our company, we take up to respect for one for the neighbors, for two for the environment. I mean, we make sure that our grinders have bags on them, they collect the fiberglass dust. When we are cutting exact, we usually have usually don't have access to a vacuum, but we usually put a trash can connected to a to a vent pipe that'll you know drop the debris into a trash can that we can properly dispose of into a dumpster or something. Um, we try not to blow. Any of the stuff into the streets, sweep it up, they put the majority of it into a trash bag, and, you know, dispose it over properly. Um, but you do see a lot of contractors that take care of less and blow the stuff around. I mean, you see some fiberglass companies that just go out there and start grinding and the stuff's all over the place. I mean, you just, 
we get a lot of it in the summertime when people are out there trying to enjoy their vacation and you're out there grinding fiber bass and you know, you know, you know, it's all over them or chipping and dev, you know, it's you see it. So, I mean, even being in this business, I do support this this ordinance and I think it'll be a good thing that and hopefully a lot of the towns will start following and and going with. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I agree. I agree with everything Councilman Wright said. Uh, so any only positives to this ordinance. There are no negatives. So any other uh, comments or questions regarding? All right. We have a motion to introduce. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? All right. We have a motion to advertise a notice of introduction in the Hamilton Gazette on October 23rd uh, for a public hearing on November 21st. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? All right. Moving on to the bills. Councilman Wright. Like to make a motion. Yes, sir. Make a motion. Roll call, please. Patanese? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Ray? Yes. And Richie? Yes. All right. I'll open up to council for any final comments. Uh, Councilwoman Heist. Um, just, I want to just wish everybody a happy Halloween. Please be safe on Halloween. Make sure you are aware of where the little ones are. They get very excited. They run into the street. They run down the street. Just please, if you're out in your car, be aware of where they are. <clears throat> and my other thing is don't forget to go out and vote. Your vote is your voice. So if you want to have something to do with what happens in this city, please go out and vote. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Dash. But yeah, I'd just like to remind everyone that it's, it's getting dark a lot earlier now. Um, it's a good idea if you can keep your porch light on. It makes it safer for people walking down the street. It makes it easier for our police officers to see what's going on as well. So get the porch lights on. LED bulbs, it's inexpensive to run. So it's definitely helpful. Thanks. That's all I got. Thank you. Councilman Wright. Uh, just real quick. Um, I mean, if, if you don't know, then you're really not going to make our city. But varsity is um, on a real... Uh, right now for uh, football um so with that being said we are about 95 percent sure that we're going to be home field throughout the playoffs um with that being said we're gonna have to reach out to the ambulance so again for those two games yeah. or at least one for now yeah. and uh also with keith to get public works you just shoot him an email yeah i am yeah but i'm waiting until sunday to make sure it's 100 percent. i mean we got to take care of business on sunday first to make it official but it's about 95 percent sure we'll be well playoffs. and with that being said it, well taxi has their own taxi pool, but pp and jv will follow um so they will be at least home with us the first round if they also win and we win then they'll continue uh staying home with us if we happen to varsity happens to lose and Pee Wee and JB win, then they can get branched off and go wherever the next seat is that they will go to. Listen, it's still a clean sweep, man. Yep. That's what we're open. Mm -hmm. That's what we're open for. Um, so but we got to take care of business on Sunday and Summer Point against the Sharks. Um, and then I'll know better Sunday night, but most likely uh we'll be home throughout the uh, playoffs. Exciting time. Yes. Really happy for you. Oh, so yeah, really yeah. deep I'll inside. I'm the <laughs> away games are so much better than that. I mean, to crack open those beanies. Yeah. <laughs> Got one with me right now. Yep. Anything else? No. Oh, and uh, Monday nights, don't forget, uh, 7 to 8 o'clock is still open during the community school. Um, and then hopefully once football ever decides to get over, um, we'll be in full basketball mood and tryouts for travel and rec basketball signups are starting also. You can uh, look us up on our Facebook page and uh, see for sign up fees and stuff like that. Other than that, I think that's about it. Thank you, sir. Councilman Timbers. Uh, just to uh, help Mason out because he forgot, um, uh, the city of A Harbor City and Cedar Creek were uh, national news this past week. Uh, because of football. Uh, well, the Melton Brothers, mm -hmm. one place for Arizona, the other place for Green Bay, uh, their teams met and the two brothers faced each other for the first time. And the announcers loved the fact that they both went to Cedar Creek. Okay. Um, one other thing is one of my uh, friends has let me know that uh, people are back out pulling on car handles. So uh, when you guys go home, make sure you lock your cars. I'm broke. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nathan said that rock basketball signups are coming up, and we're going to start those this Saturday at the Fall Fest. So if you come to the Fall Fest booth that we have, you can do your rock basketball sign up. It's a fifty dollars for rock basketball, and that's kindergarten through fourth grade uh, signups. For those, will continue in the stand when the concession stand is open, or there's certain Monday nights, and that's on the Facebook page. And you can talk to Coach Mason, Coach Dan, or you can reach out to me if you need any additional information. <clears throat> Councilwoman Clark. And continuing with the Crusaders, um, just want to thank everyone who came out and participated in our trunk or treat, our third annual trunk or treat. Um, we are hoping that next year is going to be bigger. This year wasn't as big as the year before, but the kids had fun and that's all that really mattered. Um, thank you to the volunteers, the Cedar Creek Peak Peak Club, also No One Hungry in Egg Harbor City, um, that they donated the bags for the children um, so they could do their trunk or treating. And uh, that's it. Awesome. So uh, I'd like to echo everything that y'all said, but y'all did forget one thing about tomorrow night. What, what, going to Cedar Creek? Cedar Creek is, uh, has welcomed the Crusaders out there mm -hmm. to escort them onto the field. So if you're free, come on out and watch a good game. Uh, should be fun. Yeah, so yeah, you can use the hometown home. app to <laughs> access tickets to Cedar Creek. It's $5 for adults, $3 for students, zero is free for senior citizens. Um, and no and, charge for the Crusaders, sorry, and no charge for the Crusaders. Yeah, the go free, but if the parents are bringing the kids, they have to purchase their tickets. Yeah. And also, Cedar Creek is in need of volunteers for the concession stand and grill. So, if anyone is available, it would be great. The fun thing is, yeah, it's an exciting time in that Carver City with youth, youth football right now. Yeah. So, please come out and support all levels. Those kids love seeing everybody out there, mm -hmm. they really do. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to public. Anyone here have any comments for want to come up? Ben Risley, morning for David Um One thing I just want to say, I'm, I'm happy to see what you did for Keith. Good worker. Anytime you need him, he comes over and takes care of you. That's good. One thing I'm not happy about was during the meeting that they had land use meeting, the mayor brought up that they were moving forward with the, the additional retail. And I know that the gentleman back there isn't happy about it either. And so I don't, I used to be for more, but we haven't <clears> seen what these guys are doing yet that are for benefits to the city. So to bring another one, and I, I stood up here was for the foreman one, but, but that was shot down, but now you got another one that's going to come in. So if you go against what your ordinance is, and you got to see what happens first before you bring another one on. So go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. And in addition to that, as I stated earlier, uh, pretty much nobody sitting up here right now knew anything about that. So it caught us all off guard. Even our city engineer knew nothing about it. We so, know or our city solicitor. So, um, or, or our clerk. Let's put it this way. Everybody said this room didn't know nothing about it. So uh, it was sad to hear something like that and then uh, have to, you know, Take the position we're taking on there. So, <laughs> anybody else from the public have any comments? Wow. I had a great show. When we went to the audience, it was said that for the first five years, uh, there would be only two lives. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, suddenly something comes up. And being very honest, we have put a lot of money in this. and. There's less margin compared to if you hear it around. Uh, there's no tax deduction if you are aware with the federal. You know, all the effort we do it, it just goes with no tax benefit to us. Neither our payroll, neither our security guard, neither our rent, nothing, no utility bills. It's a lot of hard work on our end to put it. Mm -hmm. At the end right now, I work six days to fulfill all the bills. When we started, it was very hard. Now suddenly someone just comes and open another, we, we would be screwed, even they would be screwed on their part. Mm -hmm. So I think so the council meeting need to see like, you know, how it goes for at least four or five years, then something can come up and decide, you know. And that's why we agreed on what we agreed on in that ordinance. Right. Like, and, like President Richie said, like we were all blindsided. I just found out at about 6.56. Yeah, so. Speaking facts to you, none of us know, not one person in this room knew. 
So we don't know where it came from. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for your time. <clears throat> Anyone else from public? Go once. Go once. Second. All in favor? Any nays? Hey. See y'all in the next month. Don't forget the fall fest, the way to fix on Bill Up Avenue. Press to impress. Thank you.